This clip is for Unit 3 Accounting on the Theory of Depreciation. I just want to start off with the fundamentals of depreciation from a theoretical point. We'll start with the going concern principle, which assumes that the business has an infinite life, and thus requiring any business to distinguish between... Now, some students find this hard because both result in a credit entry to the bank, both you pay for ultimately, so therefore, how do we distinguish? Well, the key thing is expenses are consumed and assets provide a future economic benefit. So again, because of the going concern principle that assumes that the business has an infinite life, we must distinguish in terms of the income statement, all the expenses that have been consumed during the reporting period, and we must list in our balance sheet all the assets that will provide an economic benefit. Now, so what do we mean by the concept of depreciation? Well, Basically, it's the allocation of the cost or consumption of an asset over its useful life. Thus, by actually determining the cost or the allocation of that cost over the asset's useful life, we're providing a more accurate measure of profit, and thus we're supporting the reporting period principle, particularly given we're working with an accrual system where we match revenue earned against expenses incurred, in this case the allocation of the cost of an asset over that. In terms of explaining why something is an expense, there's three criteria that really need to be ticked off. First one is, ask yourself this, has there been a reduction in inflows or an outflow of an economic benefit or a consumption of an economic benefit? Well, in the case of depreciation, the latter. And this raises the issue, are all non-current assets depreciated? And the answer is clearly no. If you take assets such as land, investments in shares, um, even a business investment in artwork, if there's no consumption or loss in value over time, then we cannot claim depreciation. Take assets such as computer hardware, a vehicle, etc., where you have wear and tear, potential obsolescence, there is a consumption of that economic benefit. So we can tick that box. Second one is, is there a, either an increase in liabilities or a decrease in assets? Well, in the case of depreciation that we claim, it's going to result in accumulated depreciation resulting in a reduction in the value in the carrying value of that asset. So again, we can tick that box. And finally, apart from drawings, there must be a reduction in owner's equity. And due to the claim of the depreciation expense, we get a drop in profit and ultimately a decrease in OE. So again, we can tick that box. Now, by reporting an asset at its carrying value in the balance sheet, we're in fact supporting the relevance QC because we're actually providing information that's more useful to the users in them establishing the net worth of the business. And by net worth, we mean the total assets minus the total liabilities. So therefore, they can make inform more informed decisions. Now, the key point here is there are a, a variety of depreciation methods. And in Unit 3, we only need to know a straight line. In Unit 4, we will introduce the reducing balance method. And the straight line method of uh, depreciation assumes that an asset will contribute evenly to revenue over its life. So therefore, we'll allocate the cost of the asset over its useful life in a consistent and even manner. So in terms of the actual formula for depreciation, we have two items on our numerator. We've got the cost, which we can evidence by a check butt or an invoice in terms of how much we actually paid for the asset. We subtract our estimated scrap or residual value so that we can actually work out how much is actually going to be allocated over its useful life. And our denominator is our useful life in years, which obviously is an estimated estimation of how long we think we're going to retain the asset and it's actually going to maintain a revenue gener generating capacity. Now, because we're using estimated figures, we are in fact breaching the reliability QC because there is a potential to be biased in our estimations of our useful life or residual value. We could easily over or underestimate them. So then our reports could be prone to error in terms of the actual total expense we allocate as well as the actual carrying value we report in the balance sheet. Now the relevance QC overrides the reliability QC because again, as I said before, we want to provide reports that provide A, an accurate measure of our profit by therefore allocating the expense, 
for depreciation and also providing an accurate picture of the net worth of the business by giving a more useful measure of the actual total value of the assets that forms the actual carrying value. So in terms of the conflict between relevance and reliability, the key point is that relevance overrides that because, again, we're trying to generate reports that provide the most useful information to the users. So if we actually ignored this and just reported assets at their historical cost, this would be less useful to users, particularly when we're talking about outdated, obsolete assets. So in terms of establishing the cost of an asset, we follow the same principles that we apply with stock. We add any cost incurred in getting the asset into a condition and location ready for use. This includes obviously the purchase price as well as any modification costs that are incurred in getting that asset into a revenue generating capacity. So for instance you might have some computer hardware, you might need to attach um, some type of webcam in order to conduct webinars that is a cost incurred in getting that asset into a revenue generating capacity. We also include any installation costs, so again things like photocopiers, any type of technology, computer hardware, etc. If we just get it in a big box and it's in kit form, we can't use it, we might need to pay someone to actually, to actually put it together and create an asset that's basically in a revenue generating form. We also need to include any freight costs incurred. So for instance, um, I used to have a friend who used to deliver pianos. Most people don't actually like um, picking up pianos, particularly if they're rather large. So they actually pay professionals to deliver them and basically they might, there might be insurance attached to that. So key points here in terms of how we actually report depreciation or we'll focus on the balance sheet in this YouTube so first of all we actually report the vehicle in this case at the historical cost again we can support that by a, a source document a check button an invoice we subtract any accumulated depreciation which is the total allocation of the cost of the asset thus far and we report the asset at its carrying value and again this supports the relevance qc so hopefully that was of some use for accounting students.